Lord, we are ready yes. to adore you in this place. Yes. We are ready to glorify your name. Yes. We are ready to give you all the glory that is due your name. Yes. Receive all our adoration. May our praise rise as incense to you. May our worship be a fragrance to you, O oh Lord. Be glorified in this place. Be glorified in every heart, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name in Jesus' name.
that your prayer zaidi zaidi nikufahamu yesu that i may know you and the power of your resurrection more and more of you jesus in my life hallelujah we thank you lord we bless you jesus we lift our hands in the sanctuary we give him all the glory and honor that is due in his name
won't you do nothing impossible? Nothing impossible with our God. He does not lie. He does not fail. What is hard for him to do does not exist. Oh, we thank you, Lord. You'll just follow through with us.
glorify your name. You have the final say. You have the final word. Hallelujah. You say the seed of Jacob shall not seek you in vain. Even as we will not seek you in vain this morning. Our expectation will not be cut short. For we are in your presence, Lord. Your word is here and amen. Everything in your will comes to pass. We give you adoration. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Allow your spirit to worship the Lord. Worship him in the holiness. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. For he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of adoration. Worthy of praise. Oh, we bow down and say you are king. We bow down and say you are God. 
shadow him. We thank you, Jehovah, for the great things you do for us this day. Oh my God, we surrender ourselves to you. Holy Spirit, reign and have your way. Have your way, my Father, my God. Take over my Father and reign. Take over every battle. Take over every need. Take over, take over. Oh my God, we worship you, my Father. We praise your name. Thank you, Jehovah, my God. Not for you to give us thanks. Because, oh my God, of our sister Sarah. Oh, you preserve her, my Father, my God, from this day. We thank you because of our life, oh God. We thank you because of your healing, oh my Father. We thank you because of this donation, Jehovah, King of Glory. We give you thanks, we pray, oh my Father. You shall complete the healing, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for Patricia and Tabitha. Oh my God, we declare that Jehovah, you are the great physician. If now she go to the surgeon, oh my Father, we pray that she will take over my Father, oh God, in the name of of Jesus Christ, we pray for success in that surgery, and we pray for healing and recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we pray, my Father, for Jaren, Je Jesse, Santum, and Matthew, oh, my Father, that Lord, my God, you shall do the complete healing in Jesus' mighty name. Because, oh, my Father, you began the good work of healing, you shall bring it to completion. Lord, we thank you, Jehovah. You are our God, you are our Lord. Rend the service and have your way. We praise, we bless you. We give you glory and honor. For it is in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. sit down, would you just look at the person standing next to you and just greet them like this. That is our greeting today. It is good to see each and every one of us in the house of God. And the Lord has been good to us. You can proceed and have your seat. Amen. Amen. We want to take this opportunity to appreciate you for coming to church and coming to worship with us. We do not, at any particular moment, want to take it for granted. I want to appreciate and acknowledge those who are with us for the first time. You have never worshipped at Sitam Gong. This is your first time. Why don't you just raise your hand? You have never worshipped with us. This is your first time. Please indicate for, by raising your hand. Yes, I see those hands. Amen, amen. Something else I want you to do for us, just rise. We'll not call you here for a testimony. Just stand so that we can, the ushers can give you a welcome card just to tell you more of who we are. Please rise, please rise wherever you are. Amen, 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 amen. You can proceed to sit down immediately. You receive it. And we want to tell you who we are. Yes. We are, church, let's remind them, a community of believers impacting the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ through the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Every day we live to know God and make him known through evangelism and discipleship. Please make that real. Reach out to people. Know God. Make him known. Amen. Amen. That's who we are after the service. Those of us who... This is your first day to be with us. Uh, you will be, we'll be calling you so that we can offer you a, a nice cup of tea, juice, coffee, whatever you want to partake. Our senior pastor has been gracious enough to offer that to you. So you will come to my left, which is your right. Amen. We want to proceed and it is time to give. I didn't hear that. It's time to give. Amen. And so you can give in various ways. You can drop your hard cash. You can give your cash at the baskets placed in strategic places. We have some at the front. We also have others 
positioned in strategic places and the ashes will guide you even at the, for the guys who are um, upstairs. So we want to tell you, you can also give through MPESA, pay bill number 933-943. It's already projected there. You can swipe your card and the ashes will, would be of help to you as you exit the sanctuary. Also, should you choose to write a check to us, you can address it to Christ is the Answer Ministries and at the back, you can uh, write the name of your assembly that is Sitam Gong and you can also please indicate your number so that in case there is any clarity we need, we can reach out to you. We want to pray before we start giving, and then after that, the media team will roll down the announcements. But before that, let me bring to our attention one announcement. You are here and you have children, babies, or a baby whom you would like to dedicate to the Lord. Baby dedication class is taking place on Saturday, the 27th of this month, uh, uh, Saturday the 27th of this month in the morning um, in the morning hours so kindly register at the information desk if you want to dedicate your baby the ladies and gentlemen at the desk will also tell you the actual time the class will be taking place we'll also reach out to you so indicate your number nicely having said that let us pray for the offering our father and our God we've come before your presence this morning and we want to thank you you have been good to us. You have protected us. You have healed some of us. You are still doing the same in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for being with us throughout the week. We want to thank you even for providing unto us. And this afternoon, we've come before your presence with a token of part of what you've blessed us with. Father, we want to give this as a thanksgiving that will go towards carrying out your mission here on earth. We pray, Jehovah Lord, that we're going to bless the giver and even those who desire to give and have nothing to give, Lord, won't you bless them? Won't you, oh God, open uh, business opportunities? Won't you give them jobs, my Father, that we, as we meet next time, they may also have something to say thank you unto you with, oh God. We want to thank you even as we proceed to Sunday school for our children. Uh, children. Father, won't you minister to them at their level and it right in those classes in Jesus' name. Father, we worship you, we give you glory, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. We can give. You are free to give. Amen. A very good morning to you and many thanks for joining us at Sitem Gong God's Habitation. It's been the 14th of November, the year 2021. News Desk begins right now. Kindly take note of our usual service timings, which are as follows. The first service is from 9 a.m., then the second service is from 11.30 a.m. The teen service is from 11.30 a.m. at the Youth Hall. The Crossroads Fellowship for University and College-going students is from 2 p.m. Then the Wednesday midweek service from 5 to 6 a.m. via Zoom. Friday service is from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in person and on Facebook. Sitem Gong, in partnership with Ngong Sub-County Hospital Ministry of Health, announces a vaccination outreach on the 20th and the 21st of November 2021 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Sitem Gong. Ensure that you register with the Ministry of Health Chanjo platform at portal.health.go.ke. Sitem Men's Fellowship presents the Hills Conference 2021 on the 20th of November virtually on Sitem Church online social platforms and physically at Sitem Valley Road to Limited in person from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The theme is Spiritual Muscle at Tipping Point, drawn from 1 Samuel 30 verse 7. Register at the desk outside. 
The Seaton Joint Women Ministry invites all ladies 18 years and above for the joint meeting which will be held on the 20th of November 2021 at Seaton Karen Main Century and virtually on all Hope Media platforms from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The speaker will be our very own Bishop Kalisto Odede. Come and let's finish strong together. Seaton Business Forum Gong invites you to our second annual Kingdom Dinner on Saturday the 4th of December 2021 from 6 p.m. Simon Wafubwa, CEO and Wealth Financial Services, will speak on the topic Anointed for Business. The disciples labored the whole night without catching anything and upon the word of Christ, the catch was great. How can you make this. Charges are 1,200 only. The pay bill number is 933-943. Then forward the message to the number 0722-660384. 0722-660384. Greetings from the Discipleship Ministry. We bless God that finally it's possible to baptize those who need it. Please register at the information desk if you have been longing for this. The baptism will take place on the 21st of November 2021. Register for more information. We are pleased to announce the second reading of Bands of Marriage between Emmanuel Njao Kongo and Pauline Naisenya Lumet on the 27th of November 2021 at Langata Botanical Gardens from 10 a.m. Now if anyone has any just reason why this couple should not be joined into holy matrimony kindly notify the senior pastor 21 days before the wedding date of forever hold your peace it's always a pleasure having you on this edition of news desk enjoy the rest of the service and have a lovely week ahead my name is Nelly Lusigi Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said praise the Lord. Amen. It is good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord. Good morning. Amen. Oh, actually it is afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> wow. You know sometimes we come to church and we don't care about who is sitting next to you or behind you or in front of you. And we, we, we just do church as if it is a ritual. Would you turn to your neighbor on your right and your left? If they are not looking fine, ask them, can I pray for you? <laughs> Amen. We can be open with one another. You can say, we came from the same house, but pray for me. Amen. I have a special friend. Uh, I have known... I have known Ruben um, more closely from 2000 when I served at Satan Karen. And uh, when he, I think the year following, he produced the album Sina Mungu Mwingine. Was it that? Or was it yeah, at Ombilangu. Ombilangu? And we led worship in Karen together with him. He's a preacher, he's a composer, and now he's a via. He's vying for, veering or vying? Vying. Vying. Thank you. Wasomi kutoka kisumu. Asante sana. Yeah. For the presidential seat. Praise God. And so he came to Nairobi, and if you're watching news yesterday, he was with a group of people who's. Uh, stalls had been burned or houses in Kurua or Wanjenga. And um, he, in the first service, was ministering in Sita Mburuburu. And uh, he called me and said, I'm in town. Can I just pass by in Gong? You people pray for me. You know me. And I said, of course. We've been talking about influencing government and politics and urging people to get involved. And he's one of us, and I know there are many others here who are seated who are uh, uh, searching for an office, 
either an MCA or other office. Are you here? Can I just see by a show of hand? Would you stand so that we see your face? Would you stand if you're, if you're doing any of that? Amen. Yes. Our very own elder uh, Ikwenye Julius is wiring for governorship wow. in Busia. Wow. If you come from Busia, would you give a vote? Weshimiwa Sudi is also wiring for presidential seat. We have our brother there. Suto tu mask. Yani julikana kidogo. Na wapatia free publicity. Would you turn around and wave at the congregation? Hata kule nyuma. Toi yo mask. Kidogo ndio tukiona feature yako. Is it feature ama picha? Picha. We will say, ah, uyu tunamjua. So that we are not throwing away our vote. I really appreciate each one of you. And when you get there, remember we will come to your offices. Amen. When you are doing the right thing, we will celebrate you here. If you are doing something that is wrong, I'll come to your home in private. And we'll have a discussion, you, me, and God. Buwana oh, sifiwe yes. sana. It will be good one of these days I walk into State House and say, President Hallelujah. Ruben, apa, aa, apana, apana. <laughs> Amen. And he's here and he's asked we pray for him. And we will not only pray for him, but we'll pray for all of you guys who are uh, looking for those offices. At the end of this song, let me do something abnormal. I will ask you to come to this stage. And as I pray for Reuben, as we pray for him, we'll also pray for you. Is that okay, church? I know they won't politic here because we honor God, but we will pray for them. Have I represented you right? You have, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So tell them what we are going to do. All right. I don't know what we are going to do. <laughs> um, but Jeho and I come from, uh, you know, many years. And I sent him a text um, asking him to join me to do a song, and I gave him the key. But I had forgotten that he is a tenor and I'm a baritone. <laughs> so I was regretting the key I sent, so I'm going to switch the key. And I'm going to give him his tenor space so that he can do the solo part. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a duet. If it succeeds, we'll ask you to join us to sing. But the truth is that as individuals, as families, as people who work as a nation, if we ever imagine that we can do without God, we are lying to ourselves. And this morning, we just want to confess that we have absolutely no one to depend on, mm. no one to take us through the coming nine months except the Lord God Almighty. Amen. And wouldn't it be nice for us to stand at Kasarani or wherever it will be and sing to the Most High even as the first one in command? It would be fantastic yeah. for a president to lead worship. How about that? Yeah. I mean, David did it. We pray, but don't believe. Mm. David did it. It can be done. Mm. Revival can be right here. And truly, whenever you go back home, tell God something about this nation. We need him so badly. So this is going to be a guitar song. So we will expel all of you that are trying to play along. <laughs> we'll play. There is also protocol, so you need to. Mm. All right. So, right? Si 
Nina Chaku Pendeza Wala Chafaida Ila Wewe Buana Wan Don't play, please. Mungu wa milele. Mwili na moyo wangu Vyaweza zimia Bali mungu ndiye nguvu Kwa uhai wangu Yeye sehemu ya on your feet. Let's do the two of us again. Sina mungu mwingine. You may play now. Waku tegemea. Everyone, sing along. Bingu ni na junia. Would you come up? Please come up. Would you come up? Nina ni wingi ni acha za ero ya kuna kuni para kami.
Hallelujah. You may have your seat for those of you who are standing. Let's do some reality checks. According to the eyes of men, it would seem like there are two horses for the office of the president. Isn't that true? But God has shocked us. In Tanzania, he did something that had never been done. He took an unknown figure in the name of Magufuli and put him into leadership. I understand in Malawi, or is it Zimbabwe? And Zambia. And took a former bishop, that is Malawi, and put him as a president. The race is not to the swift. If we need to change this country, we cannot continue doing the things that we do. We cannot continue to vote the way we've been voting. We need to reconsider our ways. And I pray that many of you who are here, that maybe your community has asked you to stand and represent them, that you will do it by faith, trusting God. Some of these people standing here, I know for our elder Julius, he has been asked by his community to stand. He didn't, but he has been asked. For Reuben, God has led him to stand. For my brothers, I've not sat with them, but I believe it is God's calling and leading. Would you stretch out your hands towards them and just pray for God's intervention? Our God and Father, you're the one who put in office and takes away from the office. These ones who are standing here are taking a step of faith to vie for leadership offices in our country. Father, we are committing them to you. We are asking your spirit to rest upon them, that it will be so visible. That when people go to cast lot, they will not have any doubt yes. as to who to represent them in the various offices, including the highest office in this republic. Father, change the course of our nation. Yes. Lord, we've been heading down, down the road the wrong side. Jesus. Lord, it has been politics of tribe, Jesus. politics of finances, politics of who knows who. Father, we want that changed. May you speak to our hearts that for us to change the situation, that we have to do things differently. Because it is madness to continue doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Father, would you cause there to be a change in the hearts of Kenyans who have the votes to the glory and to the honor of your name. May your name be glorified. May you choose for yourself a leader. And may you put that leader in our hearts so that we may do according to your bidding. Yes. So we commit our brothers standing here. Thank you for calling them into politics. Yes. Thank you for giving them the courage to stand and say that I want that office. For fear is not of the Lord. Yes. But you've called us to have a spirit of love and soundness of mind. Yes. A spirit of boldness and courage. Father, we pray that should you have placed your anointing on these ones and you put them in those offices, Father, we will glorify you like never before. We will say that this is not a man's doing, that this is the Lord's doing. And Father, may you put the agenda so clear in their hearts that when they are speaking it, they will be so clear and that people will say this is the Lord, not the works of man. So we commit Reuben, Julius, my fellow brothers here, even the sisters, who will be standing. Yes. And we ask you, grant them favor and success. Yes, we pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Everybody say, amen, amen and amen, amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Ruben, Elder Julius will take you. Yes, you may have your seats. Amen, 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 amen. Wow. We still have some 45 minutes. Praise the Lord. And we want to listen to the word of God. Reuben always shocks me. He pulls surprises on me. He 
He said he would sing the melody, then he says, you are singing. You know when somebody says it here, now you are like, now do you argue or do you respect and just respect? <laughs> he always plays those tricks on me. I love you, my brother. Amen, 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 amen. We want to listen to the word of God. Have you been blessed this month? Wow, we've had amazing preachers. And today we have another amazing Speak up, one as if he were. In the first service, we were thoroughly blessed. Is it thoroughly or thoroughly? Thor- <laughs> hey, idea. Our speaker has been married for the past 13 years. In April, she clocked 13 years in marriage. And she's been married to one man called Alan Kamau. They are blessed. Yeah. They are blessed with three beautiful children. Kion, a man who loves unreservedly. Makena, very protective of her siblings. And very caring. And Modoni, the adventurer. That's what I call her. If you want adventure, you need to make Modoni your friend. Our sister has served in Sitam for the past 15 years. This is not her last message. Her last message will be on the 28th. She's still the deputy senior pastor here at Sitam Gong. Please don't ask her, how is the wider ministry? She knows the wider ministry in Gong, in, in Sitam. She can tell you about Woodley, Karen. She served in various assemblies. And would you put your hands together for Reverend Nyakeo Kamau as she brings the word of God to us today. Amen. 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 Um, Thank you, Senior Pastor. Allow me to um, give the bishop of my house (laughs) an opportunity to greet us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of God. And we are here to receive God's word. Hallelujah. That in receiving God's word, we pray that it shall remain. And that it shall bear much fruit. Hallelujah. That as we hear the word, we shall be doers of God's word. Praise the Lord. And so I think I'll pray for our pastor, and then we'll hear the word. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your mercy and your goodness. We thank you for allowing us to be here and to gather with one another and to fellowship with you. That, Lord, in the hearing of your word, we will receive light. That darkness will be dispelled. That chains will be broken that light will be shed in our paths, that, Lord, we shall be doing your word and we shall obtain victory because we are doers of your word. And so I pray for our hearts, that our hearts will be able to receive your word, that we shall mix it with faith, and that, Lord, it shall bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. And so I pray for Rev. Nyakeo. I ask that you anoint her, give her utterance by your spirit, and that, Lord, as she communicates your word, we shall receive it with faith and with gladness. And so we thank you this afternoon because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alan. Um, I don't know whether to say I bring you greetings from the wider ministry. Um, But all the same, wider means the larger ministry, not a certain address. But it's a joy to minister this afternoon to us as we look on our sixth mountain, of establishing the kingdom of God in business and economics. Um, So thank you, Senior, and the leadership for this opportunity. Amen, amen, amen. Um, Part of of what we want to do, and and, and thank you, Brother Ruben, uh, President uh, Mutarajiwa. Uh, I love that song, Buona ni mchungaji wangu. It's a song that has carried me through many seasons of my life, so God bless you. Amen. So we want to look at establishing the kingdom of God in business and economics. 
uh, and, and part of what I want to do this afternoon is to help us to know and understand some of the challenges and opportunities faced in becoming a kingdom representative on the mountain of business and economics. So we have looked at different mountains in the last five Sundays, beginning with the, with the mountain of, of um, politics. We went to art and entertainment. We went to family. We have dealt with philosophy. We, um, yeah, And then we also last week dealt with education. Uh, so today we look at the business mountain. And one of the ways, by the time we leave this service, I'm hoping that we'll be able to to understand how we can become kingdom representatives in this mountain of business. And I don't know how many have been called into this mountain of business, but you will discover that in one way or the other, we interact with this uh, mountain. Amen. Now, allow me to do a bit of explanation to let you know that there are different mountains that, uh, that are in existence. There are different nations. Let me talk about the nations because I want to come to the mountain. But there are different nations that God has called us to. And so when Jesus gives the great commission in the, in the book of Matthew chapter 28, and he says, go ye to all the nations of the world. What basically you need to understand is that he's just not talking about geographical nations. And I think for a while we have been thinking it is the geographical nations or at times are going to subset groups or to the unreached people groups. And yes, that is part of the Great Commission. But part of the nations that we are talking about today is that God has called, there are four kinds of nations that we have. One is the language nation. Uh, uh, these are people who are grouped as a nation because of speaking a common language. There is also the geographical nations. And these, uh, so for us as uh, Africans, we belong, uh, we are called the African nations because we belong to this geographical continent of Africa, the blessed Africa. Africa. There is also the spiritual nation. The Bible says that we are a holy nation, a people that have been called to God. And there are times when God calls you to go and impact a certain spiritual group. Um, and I know we've talked about the mountain of religion. And, and at times as believers, we are stuck on this mountain and forget that we need to also impact all the other mountains that God has placed before us. And then there are the professional nations, the seven nations that we have been talking about, which we are calling the mountains of influence that we need to go and impact as believers. When you go to the Bible, to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1, the Bible says that when the Lord your God shall bring you into the land where you're going to possess it, and you have cast out many nations from before you, and he mentioned seven ites, the Hittites, the Gigashites, the Amorites. He also men mentions um, about the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, the Jebusites. Seven nations greater and mightier than you. One of the reasons you find that the church is not included in this nation is because as the church, part of our responsibility is to reconcile these deformed professional nations back to God. So when you look at the, all the acts you find in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1, they actually represent the different mountains that we have been dealing with. And so the children of Israel are on their journey into the promised land and they are told that they will be able to be delivered. God was going to give them those nations and the land that where those nations were, 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 were habitating. That was to mean that as a children of, good, of God, because we are the spiritual Israel, as we walk into the promised land, we need to, to declare, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in whatever mountain that the Lord has called you. So our work as a church is to reconcile back these deformed professional nations and bring it back to God in Jesus' name. So part of what I'm dealing with, I won't go to the other nations, but the nation of business and economics is represented by the tribe of the Canaanites. And Canaanites, what that means, uh, when you go to Strong's Dictionary, literally means merchants 
or trafficker. Now, taking you back to, to the high school business studies that we used to do, a merchant is a person involved in buying, selling, or as a trader. That is who a merchant is. And there are three levels of involvement as a merchant. One is in industry, the other one is in commerce, and the other one is in finance. Now, industry basically means production of goods and services. I'm going somewhere with my story. The production of goods and services. Now, commons means the exchange of these goods. Now, finance means the perceived value of these goods and services. And the people who God has called into this mountain, you'll either find yourself you're in the industry, you're in commerce, or you're in finance in this mountain. Now, an industry is not called so because of the size of its premises or the number of the workers that it has but rather because it produces some form of goods or service because of the talents and the graces that we carry. So there are some of us, when, uh, uh, there are some of us who uh, are what I call the mobile industry. This means, and I know we have a number of this, mobile industry are the people who operate from the boot of their car. If you tell them, I need you to sign something for me, they will quickly open their car, go through things in their boot, and come out with a contract for you to sign. Some mobile industry people are people who even make like peanut from their house because that's their premise, and then they sell it. I know people here who are busy making soap from their houses and doing what? And selling. What they are is called a mobile industry. So when Unilever is being told to stand up, you who is a mobile industry, you need to also be doing what? To be standing up because you say, I am a mobile what? Industry. How many are mobile industries here? <laughs> And, 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 and you find that these, some of us have been called to that. And I discovered one of the things for me as a person I would do, there's a time I was very busy in this. I would go and get a bale of something, put it in the boot of the car, and sell it. So I was a what? And then I learned that there is always something you can do if you want to be in this mountain of business. There's a time I went to the wholesaler, I took a bag of rice, I divided it into kilos, and I called my friends, why are you my friends? And I said, you need to? To buy, because I decided I want to become a mobile what? Hi, look at your neighbor, do they look like a mobile industry? <laughs> so it's not the size, it's not because you have a premise or location, or because you have a big workforce. You could be the, the CEO, the accountant, the what? The receptionist. Because when, when you walk in a place, even your own industry, the industry walks into a place. <laughs> Literally. And, 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 and we have to start looking at it like God will lift you up. Do not despise those days of humble what? Humble beginnings. I know a lady who started selling socks, little socks, and then she has grown into, in Mutumba business, and has grown into a multi-million business because she was faithful in the little, and she did not despise hawking in the estate. So God is able to grow us from where we are. Now, so when you look at the Great Commission, then it makes sense when God says, go ye into all the nations of the world, that God, whatever God has called you, you go, I know some of you are saying, Abana, I will still step into nations. Yes, you will. But God has called you to impact different spheres on, of influence. As Sitam, as Sitam, the beautiful thing is that we have looked at this mountain and we have become very intentional about it. So there's what we call the Sitam business um, community. And uh, last month we had um, a conference in Sitam Karen. 
And, and basically, is, uh, this mountain is to reconcile um, uh, the plan of God back to, back to God, uh, to, to reconcile this mountain back to God's plan. Now, in Sitamgo, we have a branch of CBF. And part of what we are is to become kingdom financiers. That in that CBF, when you come for that CBF, and by the way, I'm inviting you for the dinner that is going to be on the 4th of December from 6 p.m., is that when you come there, the talk we have is that we are kingdom financiers. We are multi-billionaires. We are financing God's work. You know, it is so wrong that we can be looking for money to do something and all you need to do is come and say, Mimi Nina Simamilia. As a loan, as a mobile what? <laughs> as a mobile industry. Did you know when Muslims get blessed, they normally go and say, I am standing and building a mosque for Allah. How much more the children of God? Whatever God has put in your hands is to finance the kingdom of God. Not so that you can be, you know, doing screenshots of the balances in your bank account. And so that when people are just, you know, talking and discussing things, you just have a slight look and you say, my God, look what the Lord has done. It is to do the work of the kingdom. Now, is... There's this question. It's impossible for a Christian to do business in a corrupt environment. Do you agree with that? Is it impossible? It's not impossible. But this is a question that I want to throw to you so that you can have that discussion in your safari groups as you go into the week. What are some of the business principles that we can learn from the Bible? Some of the, what are some of the things we can learn? Store up your treasure in... In heaven, you need to stop your treasure in heaven. This basically means that you need to have, the Bible says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will do what? will be there also. So our treasure must be in heaven, in things that have eternal value, in things that you will stand before the Lord and give an account and say, this is what I did with the grace you gave me in this mountain of business. Giving money to worthy causes will set you on the path of wealth. So for example, if, if you have a business, and a lot of businesses have this arm they call uh, giving back to the community, CSR, you know, um, it's important to have that. Whether it is a big organization or whether you're a mobile what? Industry. Look for the poor. Give to the poor. There is something the Bible says when you give to the poor, you give to the Lord and God is what? He's no man's debtor. He will come back and reward you. The other thing is that one of the worthy causes to do, you must never forget to tithe from your business. You must never forget. And by the way, by this time, I want to believe as Sitam Gong, we have moved from thinking, is it gross or is it net? Sinikweli, is it, where am I giving from? But the Bible says, just tithe. As, a, as you give to the Lord, you're securing your business. And it is very important to say this. And at times, there are times when you have so many bills to pay, and at times we give excuses and say, God, but you understand. I will pay next, next month. How many know next month that there will be other things that will come? And then you will be saying, oh God, you are merciful. You understand. I failed. All that. But God is saying, let us tithe from our businesses. In the book of Malachi, the Bible talks about when you give and you tithe, that the Lord is able to rebuke the devourer on your behalf, on your behalf. And when you give your tithe, when you're giving to God, it is an act of honoring God. When you give to him, it's not because God is broke. Is God broke? It is just a matter of the fact that I'm honoring God with this portion, but also that I am not allowing money to have a hold of my life, but I want to give it back to God. 
Colgate Palmolive said that when they started, uh, they, they started by giving 10%, and by the time I was reading this story a couple of years back, they were tithing 90% and living on 10% and still doing so much with the 10%. We, God must help us to move from saying it is 10% to, eh? to giving beyond, beyond. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Give beyond that. How you feel about yourself is how others will also see you. Um, so there are people who feel unworthy and deserving of good things or, or wealth. You know, when God blesses you, you become very apologetic. Uh, for some of us, when God blesses us, and I hope uh, Prof, Prof Ngure is around when he talked about that Rado watch last Sunday. Some people were blessed to wear the Rado for 200K. Mimi niriona broti broti. Maguta, maguta. I'm here to have a conversation with the professor. But do not be, do not be apologetic when God blesses you. But also remember that this blessing, the wealth that, you know, we must never be pursuing wealth. When you pursue your business and you're doing the right thing, wealth will automatically follow you. So, and then also you discover that you attract your kind. You attract your kind. Um, you remember the story of the children of Israel. They're about to go into Canaan and they send the spies. The spies come back and say, we looked like grasshoppers. So you've gone for a business meeting, but because you have a grasshopper mentality, when people start talking about the deals that they're putting on the table, you start just getting smaller and smaller until you disappear out of there. Of their room. There are people when they come, they show up in a place. They have a little idea like this. But when they represent that idea, people buy into that idea because they have changed their kind of thinking and they have refused to be a woye woye believer. So may God help us because people will resonate with what is in you. If you are not sure, you know, uh, yes, uh, if I give you this software, it might work or it might crash your laptop. Will I buy that software? But if you come and say this software has been used, an equivalent of the same has been used by, and you mentioned some big companies there, someone will go like, hey, if that company that is successful is doing well with your software, I want that software too. So you must, you, you, how, how you think, when you're going to sell a property, for example, how you carry yourself. There are people I know who, who change how they look, or even at times they, they do car hire to go for a meeting. So that they, when they show up, in case the CEO is taking you back to your car, when they see the thing you're driving out there, the machine, they go like, ah, this one, I can trust them with my, my millions. And that's the thinking of the world, by the way. So you need to, to carry yourself. You're a child of God. You are a child of God. You're a child of the covenant. The Bible says in book of, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, that it is God. Do not forget the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you what? The ability to make wealth. So I cannot, you, you know, when you walk into a place, walk like you carry God and you have the backup of heaven. And our God is not a poor God, though. You know, I discovered, when you look at the Bible, in Deuteronomy, I, I'll get that scripture in a few. He says, there should be no poor among you. Okay? So in the original intent of God, there was not supposed to be poor among. Then Jesus shows up and he says the poor will always be among. Because Aliangalia, from that time of the children of Israel, these guys are not implementing the principles I've given them to help everybody to be, to arise even in every area. So may God, may God, may God help us. Then you look at, you need to become a kingdom principle. You need to become a people person. I, 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 at this season of my life, I want to say that I've become very alert on connections. I've always been. And, and, and one of the things that you have to do is that you need to have very good, good EQ. EQ is just the ability of how you deal with people, even in your business. You know, there are people you go to their shop. How they treat you, you say, I will never come. But they go like, are you the only customer? So you went and a pesayako. 
And you see, they treat people badly and you forget that you need people to grow your business. There are many connections that God gives us. Your connection to Dubai is a network away. And it has been said that your network is your net worth. But we also discovered you can have a lot of network. Like, for example, you are my network in Sitamgong. But unless I mobilize that network, it will not equate to my net worth. So if it is unmobilized, if it is unutilized, it cannot be for your net worth. So mobilized networks are equals to your net worth. And don't ignore. God can even use a watchman to be a blessing in your life. There are people who've gone to look for land. And the person who is there is a watchman who tells you, hey, by the way, I know thou. Now imagine if you ignore them because they are watchmen. And he even has the contact. And by the way, they don't even want to share your 3% or your 5% of the land commission. But they are your network. Value people. Value people. Treat people so that you can have repeat customers. When you go to, there are some places you go and how they treat you. Have you ever walked into a shop? Um, let's go to town, not to go. Let's go to town, to go river road. You walk into a shop. And because you have been walking, looking for this particular product, it's a hot, it's been a hot season. So there's a lot of dust. Sinequeli, you walk into a certain shop and the attendants of the shop look at you from head to toe. And because you are dusty, they diss me. They dismiss you. And what they don't know is that they are dismissing a big connection. May God help us. And I'm very, very big on customer service. So in Waida, if you want to deal with customers and your employees, just call me. Earnings and profits are God's way of rewarding us for forming relationships with others. I said this before. When you serve human beings, wealth will follow. The Bible says that you will lend to many and borrow from none. I don't have time for a certain story about how God connected a lady and, and, and how, because of her ministry, God blessed her. And, and when she went to minister, God really blessed her until she was called by the president of that nation because there was a certain crisis. And because of the level of money in her account, the government asked her, could you please lend us money to sort out the crisis? And in her life was fulfilled the scripture, you will lend to nations. Not just to people, not just chamas, to nations and borrow from none. And borrow from none. May God help us. So your earnings, your profits are God's way of rewarding you uh, and for forming relationships with others. As I said, your mobilized network is your net worth. What are some of the challenges encountered while doing business in the kingdom? Uh, the kingdom way in today's marketplace. What are some of the challenges? Not having a fellowship of like-minded Christians in business. Now, you notice, for example, if I go and I find a certain deal, for example, by the way, I'm, I'm very business-minded as you see me, and you find a certain deal, that requires maybe a hundred million shillings. That, that's even little because I know some of you can just sort it out in like the twinkling of an eye. So you say, amen. But let me tell you, if you go and find a deal and you discover, alone I'm not able to do it for now. All you need to do is call like-minded people and come together and support one another and do a big thing. But the thing with us believers... <laughs> Is that at times we say, if I come and share with you about you tell me, oh, we need to take time to pray and fast. Nothing wrong. It's good to see God's will concerning a matter. But see, after you pray, you come and tell us what the Lord told you. So that we know whether we are progressing with you in this, in this thing. But the, for example, the Asians have defeated us in this. They network and they never leave their own. If someone opens a business, imagine they'll be coming from going to go and buy in that shop. But us, hey, look at them. 
You know, we don't support one another. We need to support one another. And as we come to support you, please do your business with excellence and integrity so that you will have a testimony. And so that we won't say, ah, that one because they are a believer. They even never open their businesses on because they are where? <laughs> you know, they never open. There, there's always that tag. Oh, you know, on that day, Sijui, what happened? Apana, even if you're unwell, go to that business. Let God heal you when you're aware. When you're there. Otherwise, when people come, like, I don't know whether you've noticed this. When you're going for an Mpesa, and you go to a certain place once to look for money, but you can't withdraw. Second time, will you go a third time? No, you will not go. You'll look for an alternative. So may God help us as business people um, to be people of integrity. Cartels are there. Um, and I don't want to keep talking about cartels, but when you go to scripture, the Bible talks about in the book of Acts chapter 2 that the church was united and they were able to move quite a lot. Now, there can be also some effects of peer pressure and unfair competition. Okay? So this could be some of the challenges. One, you need to conduct an honest business and think for yourself. Think for yourself. Don't be influenced to enter into businesses. And people are telling you, business legit, man. Or, you know, chemical, wash, wash. Have you heard of this wash, wash business? And it is said that even after the production of the same, that many people have been conned. Because now people tell you, Apana, what that guy is saying is true. But what I'm offering you is business legit. And so you're even conned because you're not aware. Think for yourself. You remember the columnist who used to write, I think, in, in the nation many years ago. And he would say, when the deal is too good, do what? Think twice. Think twice. Some of us have been conned out of money because of that. I don't know what is your story. I don't know what is your story. But um, misery and sin love company. So do not be influenced to evil or wickedness. Come and... Come and, you know that people will say, come and see why we have prospered. Misery and sin love company. So some people will come and say, come, I'll take you to someone who will teach us how to prosper. And you see, like that chemical story, uh, I think it's, it's another story. This lady says, ha, huh? watcha, we will, but nini? My discovery, ndio wafanya nini? And then you go because you have been influenced by that. But may God help us not to, not to join in misery and in sin. There are people who have, who have even done sacrifices of gone to witch doctors. A number of business people will tell you, part of what I'm fighting in my area of business is because the people around me are using what? Witchcraft. But you have power and authority. And the favor of God is upon you. In Jesus' name. Peer pressure can lead to tragic consequences. It can lead to... So, you have peer pressure. This is happening. There is this thing happening. I don't know about some of you. But those years when there were the pyramid schemes. I'm telling you, I took a loan. And put in a certain pyramid scheme. And two weeks before it matured. The thing went down. I'm telling you, I looked at myself paying a loan and not, and not seeing what that money has done for you. You have to be careful. It was peer pressure because I knew by the time I am done, my friend, my life will never, ever, I said ever, be the same. Hey, Niliona, your discovery. <laughs> discovery or like another one where when we went to be introduced it was a business like you sell things MLM uh, but when we went guess who was introducing this business it was a Nigerian lady Maze, if a Nigerian person comes to market something to you run away if you're not <laughs> hi I remember her saying, once you enter into this business, your life will shift. As some people from my side will say, you will cross over from one side, Yashida, Wingia nini? Wingia kwa pesa. 
And I remember she said, when God does this, and she was a believer, by the way, I think she was a person. So Kasema, you know, since I entered into this business, God has remembered me. You know the things we like to hear as believers? When I go, God has blessed me with a house that has a driveway. Hey! Hey, ni kanza kuwana kama, tumehama. So you have to be very careful and designing and designing. And by the way, we may laugh, but I know if I said lift up your hands, some of us have been so conned. We have lost so much money. But how many know we live to make money? There's another day that is coming in Jesus' name. And I pray that for you, God will restore for you. Some have even lost houses. They have lost lots of property. It has even led to family separation. Because of kuingia kwa ma business, quote and quote, legit. Ama jihari. So it can lead to tragic consequences. Be true to God and refuse to be compromised. When you do this, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. When you're true to God, God is faithful. He will, and then always listen to the Holy Spirit. He will, you'll always be feeling a carnage. But, if you don't deal with the, the flesh is the one that makes you go and lose the money. Ask me. It is what made me lose the money. But now if you're true to God, you'll just be feeling a check in your heart. You feel a discomfort. And you know, if I'm true to God, then God will help me not to be compromised. Be careful of the impact of covetousness and greed. To be covetous means to desire someone else's wealth. So someone is wealthy and you're there and you're thinking, How? How? And, I, and the way I pray, every month I have to fast, like half the month I have fasted. You know, when we were young, we would go and walk into places and just see a very nice car and we would hold it because we are very shpiri. shpiri. You go and see a Mercedes Benz and you lay hands on it and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I do what? I possess. How many have possessed things like that? And it never came your way. It is covetousness. We need to repent. How many need to repent with me? We need to repent. It is desire for someone else's wealth. To be greedy is the desire to gather and to hold on to wealth by any means. And you, 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 can, you can for sure agree with me that in Kenya, part of the things that we have to deal with is greed. Because people enter into offices, whether public office or wherever, and they say, I have to maximize my time here. Because I don't know how long I'm here. Maybe I'm here today. Today. And then they go ahead. And may God deliver us from greed and corruption in our nation in Jesus' name. As we desire to raise leaders who are men of integrity, righteous men to rule the land, may God give us this kind of people. Evil desires and greed, you must know that evil desires and greed are idolatry. The Bible says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. So the Bible defines for us what is idolatry. If something takes the place of God in your life, if something will make you compromise and not care what people think, if something will make you, some people have even sacrificed their children, their families on the altar of money, the love of money. The Bible says how the love of money is the root of all evil. That when you do that, you know I will get it. I will make it whatever. Then you need to deal with that because it is idolatry. Covetous, covetousness is inconsistent with the sons and daughters of God. I need someone to say amen. It is inconsistent. If you are a child of God, you cannot be covetous. That even when that spirit of covetousness kana kunyemelea, you say, shindwe, in Jesus' name. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let's read that together. Keep your lies. You see, for, for this scripture, when you apply it in that context, it means you become covetous because you're thinking 
God has left me and God has forsaken me and has gone and blessed someone else who in your eyes you feel are undeserving. But this is what the Bible says, that God has said, I will never leave you. Neither will I. How many know that what has your name will come to you? I used to listen, I listened to someone once say, um, and, and, and <laughs> they were calling, they were saying, um, whatever has my name, and they, call, they were calling money, they said, all the billions with my name on them, come to me now. Now, I, in my head, I thought, and you see at times, because we, 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 we are very careful um, as believers with what we call the prosperity gospel. But do you know, in reality, there are blessings with your name on them. And then, you have to call it forth in Jesus. And don't look at me like that. It is true. Whatever has your name comes to your address in Jesus' name. So that... Um, God can help us. Covetous gain uh, lead to, de to destruction. Um, and covetousness is never satisfied. You know, greed, he, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 5 says that he is greedy as a grave and like, deva, uh, the, like death is never satisfied. So greedy as the, you know, the grave is never satisfied. So um, may God help us and deliver us from covetousness. Now, covetousness will abound in the last days. The Bible says that in these last days, people will be lovers of, of themselves, lovers of money. When you go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, and they'll be lovers of pleasure more than the... Uh, <laughs> more than the... Lovers of God. <laughs> how can we spread the influence of God's kingdom? So this is how we need to, what we need to do to spread the influence of God's kingdom agenda in the business and economy mountain. First things first, practice taking the, taking the second step, going the extra mile. If someone invites you to, to do a business, uh, do more than expected. I have seen people deliver beyond the expectation of the client. So if you're called to do something, go the extra mile. If someone has called you to go and do deco, do something extra. Until when the client comes, they say, I, this one, I need to refer you to someone. And you see, that's how we get referrals. Referrals, when you do a good job, you will be referred somewhere else. And don't copy, you know. Um, like, like, for example, you find that people go the extra mile they will even do. For example, if somebody's in photography, and maybe Brother Theo is in the house, we have very good photographers in this place. Um, he will come and do maybe your wedding photography. After he does the photography, he will do the framing for you. And then he will, he will throw in a little extra. Have you ever seen like when you go to the hotel, maybe you're taking coffee, there are some places where they put a little extra cookie. And they say, ah, that's a little extra. You know, you, you, you will go back, but you don't, what you don't know is that you're going back for the cookie. But because they went an extra mile, it makes you feel appreciated. Okay? So the other thing, the golden rule works if you work on it. If you work it, you know? So the golden rule will work if you work it. The Bible says that do to others as you would want them to do to you. Treat people well. Treat people well. In your business, treat people well. Uh... Don't just be a salesperson. You know, a salesperson, a salesperson wants to hit it off, make a sale and go their way. But be like a marketer who is eventually looking at, at this business continuing beyond a first-time customer to a repeat customer. Uh, when you put your interactions with people um, in your business and you have the slogan, that's what you find in a lot of businesses, people have the slogan, customers come first. Though some of us in business we know that some of these customers who come first are a work of grace, sinequally, that we need to pray for them. But in the meantime, whatever they do, as you give them priority and you calm them down, you'll be able to see repeat customers in your business. So focus on profit with a purpose. With a purpose. You know, do not exploit others. Do not exploit others. The Bible says, what does it, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet for faith? their own souls. I was in a place where someone wanted to do something and then they said, why don't you connect us um, with this piece of land and as you connect us, um, we will give you a handsome, 
a handsome, handsome, not even a commission, cut. And then I told them, you know what? I would rather do it for them. That time I think, um, it, it, let's just say God helped me. Let me just do it for them. And then if they desire, they will bless me. Because I thought that was exploiting. Something that is going maybe for a million and someone tells you, make it, hike it to five million. And then this four million balance. And maybe there are 10 acres to Katane Nusu. So two million times 10, how much is that? Your life is forever changed. But then I thought, no, 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 this is not right. So focus on profit with a purpose and do not exploit others. There, there are people who, who major in businesses and part of what they do is exploiting others, exploiting the poor. May God help us. Turn by your yes and your no. You know, keep your word. Keep your word. I was thinking about, um, I know we have very good designers in the house and it is not them. But there are times you go to the fundi, Wanguo, and you take an outfit and you take a fabric and they tell you, come next week. Next week. Next week. Will you get them on phone? <laughs> they are not able to keep their, their word. But may God help us. So whatever we do, we'll be able to keep our word. Make the move from the owner to overseer. You see, when you're faithful in little, God will cause you to be entrusted with more. Be faithful with what God has put in you. Trust the law of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, cast your bread upon many waters. Okay? Cast your bread, wherever. Cast your bread upon many waters. And you never know what will come back to you. Me and Kamau, we have tried to, there's a time when we, they were keeping of rabbits. Do you remember that business? And then they were saying, rabbits are the thing. I know some people here kept quails. Rabbits were the, the next thing after quails. Ay, we did that thing to catch Jamaica. Then some people, you've, you've, you know you've tried everything. If you're like me, you've tried everything. You've tried chicken. Then you're told goat milk is working. You put a goat, it is not giving enough milk. Enough to sustain you. You have tried things. God has seen your labor. <laughs> And he's coming with the recompense in his hand. He's coming back to visit you. Whatever. Just, just try. The, thing, the, the good thing is keep trying. Keep trying. We keep talking and saying that as a business, you, you need to be always having something you're selling. You know, you've tried selling eggs. Now they're saying that the feeds have gone up. And so you know that the mathematics are not, they are not adding up. And there are many times when it is not adding up. But how many know one of these days? One of these days it's going to? To add up, and you're going to get a deal with Kempinski, not Kavalifunga, but you can get a deal with Java, for example, and go supply eggs until you're telling us, you people, you don't know the next legit business. <laughs> you need to keep eggs, but may God keep sowing and reaping. And then don't be afraid to start small. I have said this again. The Bible says that God moves us from glory to glory. When you start that small thing, let God breathe on it. And as it breathes on it, it will grow to something you cannot imagine. Believe and ask God for the impossible. When you pray big prayers, expect bigger answers. Because our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we'd ever ask or imagine. Like in, in CPF, one of the things we were doing, we were telling and, and a, a team that we were training, we told them to come up with their, strat their business strategic plan. You should have seen the presentation of those strategic plans. It is a mobile industry, but it has a big strategic plan. It is growing. It is going somewhere. You need to work like you're going somewhere if you're in business. Iniquely. And may God do for you exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or imagine. Build your business to the fourth generation. Let it outlive you. And God help you. So that you can mentor your children or whoever will take up after you well. So that after you're gone, they will not squander your wealth. As has become very common. Isaac reopened his father's wells. And then I know the story of Louis Vuitton. You, you, it's a designer bag. It's a design. I don't know who has a Louis Vuitton bag. Uh, just lift it up so that I can use it as a sample. I have a feeling your bag is not a Louis Vuitton. But it is okay. But it is... <laughs> <laughs> that one over there. Let me tell you, Louis Vuitton is, is a business that was started by a family 
that has transcended generations, centuries actually. I think it was either started in the 17 or 1600. And from, from supplying bags and, and they were supplying suitcases for the world to do, they, until where they are today, a, a business that has grown and transcended generations. It's had its own issues, but you can tell that's a generational wealth. It's a generational wealth. You've left it. You have built your business. Put structures. Put systems in your business that will, will go beyond you. Some of us, at times, because of the things we are doing, at times we put a trust for our family so that nobody will come and say, Apana, I'm the one who was supposed to inherit this business or the other. Build your business to the fourth generation. What's the implication of this as I finish? Excellent work. Is a, is a reward in itself and it should be the goal of every business. Whatever you do, do it excellently. The Bible says that whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord. Building a business on biblical principles requires a change of perspective. And let me tell you, as you enter into business, engage God. Let God be the CEO of that company. Engage him. And he will give you ideas. He will give you strategies. He will give you the connections that you need in your life in Jesus' name. Never forget this. That the Lord, do not forget. And remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the ability to make wealth. That he may confirm his covenant which he made to your fathers. I pray for you people who are in business that may God bless the work of, his hand, of your hands. May God bless your, your work in Jesus' name. May God open doors for you in the name of the Lord. May when businesses are being mentioned, let like 20 of them come from Sitam Gong in Jesus' name because you're not despising the days of your humble beginning in the name of Jesus. I pray over your life as the word of God would say that you will be blessed. You will be fruitful. You will increase in number. You will fill the earth and that you will subdue it. God has called you as an apostle in that mountain of business. As you stand there, represent God and say in this business, I declare, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in Jesus name. Go and be fruitful. God bless you. Amen. Wow. Wow, glory to God. Wow, are you blessed? As we move forward, let me reiterate this. But brothers and sisters, the scripture that pastor read, do not run to the east when they say we are making money here. Oh, let's go here, we will make money and become wealthy. Don't run. God has a way of blessing you. Yes. Praise God. You see, we also need to come to this point in our life where there is godliness with contentment. Because the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Some people have destroyed their life in the name of running after money. Don't run after money. The Bible commands us to seek first the kingdom of and his righteousness and all these things that people are looking for. All these things will be added to you. In the first service I said there was a young man in Karen in 2000. And this young man associated himself with some older men. And one of the older men said he had five acres in Karen. This young man went to him and said, can you sell me a quarter? And the man said, no, this is for my sons and you can't even afford it. Just a quarter was like two million then. 
Uh, this old man encouraged this young man to go a bit further. Probably he could find land. And this young man did that. Went to Pipeline Road and found land for 250,010 acres. He bought. Right now the value of that land cannot compare to that 250. Praise the Lord. That young man is me. God is faithful. The way he works for you is not the way he works for somebody else. The second thing I want you to take from here, grow your wealth little by little. Little by little. Even if you're trading on the online platform, put in a thousand. If you get 200, thank God. Because who makes that amount in an hour? Grow it little by little. Thirdly, if you owe someone something, or rather we all owe someone something, and if you do owe someone something, especially monies, for the service they've rendered to you, I want to urge you, would you pay for that service? It is so sad when I hear believers here in Sitam Gong that we owe one another monies. You went for a service, you were given the service, and you went and went. Now you come to church, you sit behind the brother who you owe money, you can actually see him in front. And your plan is that at the end of this service, you run out quickly so that that brother or that sister does not see you. That's not what God has called us to do. Don't break that relationship. Today, call that brother, call that sister and say, I don't have money. I really desire to pay you. When God blesses me, I'll pay you. I owed a brother 20,000 for a long time. I never lost that relationship. I would always call him every month to the point he says, I know you're going to pay me when God has blessed you. And finally, God gave me the grace and I paid him the 20,000 and I told him, I have owed you this money for over 10 years. Here is an additional. We are still best of friends till now. Don't destroy friendship because of the monies you owe your friends. Don't destroy relationships. Those friends will help your children. They will open doors for them. And so we want to pray for some people here. Probably you owe somebody money for a service that was rendered, but you have not been able to pay. We want to pray for you that God will provide for you so that you'll pay your debt and come out of that bad relationship. And that relationship will be restored. It may be your very own brother. You told them, I'll pay you. But now you say, you're still my brother. No, no, no. That's not who we are being called to be. We need to pay our debts. Secondly, we want to pray for people whose businesses are struggling. You started a business before COVID. It was just beginning to pick up, but COVID happened. And you're wondering whether to close your business. I want to tell you that God can resurrect your business again. God can bless you again. God can visit with you again. When God gave you that idea, he did not mean for your business to collapse. He wants to come in and help you. God has a purpose and agenda for your business. And I want you to trust him today to re resurrect that business. You don't need to go to a witch doctor who will give you water that is red with you know soil from Gong and tell you go sprinkle in front of your business, business will come. No. You don't need to go to the village and get a spider's web and come and put in front of your business. I'm only saying things that we were taught in Tiriki land where I come from. I know probably you guys have different things. You don't have to kill a lizard. 
or bury a fish in front of your business. You're wasting food. Don't do that. Or a goat head, that is soup. Make soup and eat and believe God to do something. We want to pray for you. Shall we bow down for prayers? Because God wants to intervene in somebody's lives and in somebody's business. God wants to change your situation. If you're here and you're in any of those categories, probably your business is struggling. Would you stand up? We want to pray for you. God is interested in resurrecting your business again. If you're here and you owe anybody any money, whichever is the case, would you be upstanding? We want to call on the name of the Lord. He is faithful. And he has promised to come through for us. Father, we are calling on your name today. King of glory, you're still God in heaven and God on earth. Heaven is not too far for you to even exist on earth. King of glory, you are here in our midst. You say, where two or three gather in your name, there you are in their midst. Father, as we stand here, we have failed you. And we have failed one another. Lord, some of us owe our brother's money. We are so embarrassed. We have been so embarrassed. We do not have the means to pay, King of glory. Would you come through for us that we'll be able to pay? Would you open the windows of heaven? Would you send help from heaven that we may come or break free from this indebtedness? Father, some of us, our business have been struggling and we don't know where to turn. Lord, our friends, our neighbors have told us to seek other idols or other things, but Lord, we have not sought them. We are here seeking your face. Would you speak life again to our businesses? Would you resurrect our businesses again? Would you speak life, King of glory, so that we may enjoy prosperity? Father, we pray that our businesses will not just be for ourselves and for our prosperity. We pray that they will also be a blessing to others who are needy that they will be able to put food on their table. We pray that you will grow our businesses so that other families will have food on the table and school fees for their children. We pray that you will grow our businesses to the level where we will bring a solution to unemployment in our country. Oh, King of glory, you gave us this idea. Would you help us grow in this idea? Lord, where we have been unfaithful so that our businesses are where they are, help us to be faithful. Where we've brought shame to you, we repent, King of glory. Our eyes are looking to you. Would you glorify your name in our business? Would your kingdom come? Would your will be done on earth and in our business as it is in heaven? Father, from today, we believe you for an increase. We believe you for open doors. We believe you for open heavens. Father, send help from heaven. Just like in the case of Daniel, where you sent angel Michael, angel Gabriel, to, to come and help and send and break through and send an answer so that Daniel receive it. Would you do the same? Send help from heaven that we may have our answers. I speak life to every business that is struggling. I speak increase to every business that is struggling. I pray for an open heaven. We look to you. We have no one else, King of glory. Help us, Lord. Grow us from grace to grace. This is our prayer. We pray all these things, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen and amen and amen. We don't like to end a service without giving you an opportunity or somebody an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. Probably you're one who brings your family to church and it has become a ritual and you've been doing this from when you were young. Your father went to church, your mother took you to church. Now you just come to church as a ritual. We want you to come, in, to come into a loving relationship. 
with God Almighty. That's why he sent Jesus for you. Probably you used to know God and you're here, but you backslid. Sin took over and you have failed God and you've never returned to God. And every time you come to church, the devil is always nudging at your hand that you shouldn't be there. We want to pray for you. God is able to forgive you. God is able to restore you. Probably you've heard this message of salvation preached over and over. But today, you sense you need to give your life to Christ. We want to pray for you. Shall we bow our heads for prayers? We pray for somebody here today to receive Jesus. Is there anybody like that? You're saying, it's me, Pastor. I come to church as a ritual. I bring my family. I bring my children because my parents did so. Or I, or I am my young person and I'm coming to church because my parents have brought me. But you've never made a personal decision to receive Christ. We want to give you that opportunity today. If you're such a one, would you shoot up your hand? We'll see it and we'll pray for you. And if you're here, you are struggling with sin and you failed God. And you want to be restored back to God. Would you also shoot up your hand? We'll see it and we'll pray for you. Is there anybody like that here today? You're saying, pray for me. Would you shoot up that hand? We'll see it and we will pray for you. We want to pray for you. I see that hand upstairs. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Put it down. Put it down. Thank you. God bless you. Is there anybody else? You're saying, pray for me. I need my relationship restored. Your being good will not take you to heaven. Your just coming to church will not take you to heaven. It's by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ that we experience salvation. It's by recognizing that we have gone astray and that nothing we do can save us but that we only need to turn our lives to God. Is there somebody else? You're saying, pray for me, Pastor. Would you shoot up that hand? We want to pray for you. God is reaching out to you. He loves you. He loves you. That's why you're here. Is there anybody else? You're saying, pray for me. Anybody else? Would you shoot that hand up so that we may see it? I'm not seeing upstairs. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Put your hand down. Anybody else, you're saying, pray for me. I want to come into this loving relationship with God. Thank you, my sister downstairs. God bless you. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. Have we missed you out? We want to pray for you. It's God who is wooing you. He's the one you're turning to, not a man. He will come in and help you. If you lifted up your hand, would you lift it up as we pray? Sina mungu mwingine Wakutegemea Binguni na duniani Hapa na mwingine Sina 
after me, Lord, I come to you. I need you. I cannot do life on my own. I come to church every Sunday. To me, it has been a ritual. But today, I come to you and I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Would you help me to live for you? I believe that Jesus, you are the son of God, that you died and rose again. I believe and I confess it with my mouth. Lord, would you forgive me my sin? Would you wash me? Would you purify me from every unrighteousness? And would you help me live for you? I realize on my own I can't do it, but with your help, I can do it. Help me from today to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you for making that prayer. If you made that prayer, you are forgiven. You have come into a new relationship with God. You are a new creation. Yours is not a ritualistic coming to church every day. You have come into a relationship with God. God bless you. Let me urge you to do something else. My brother, I know you're seated in the far end, very end. And my two brother and sister, you're way up. But would you do me a favor? Would you pick your belonging and come down? There is this brother here in a... In a, not yellow <laughs> yeah that color <laughs> would you come to him and that lady in the same would you do that for me please pick your belongings and come as others are coming come thank you for coming mom thank you for coming upstairs God bless you God bless you come come Come, come, thank you, my sister. If you made that prayer, even if you didn't lift your hand, just come. We want to reconnect you to God. Oh, I am one Adam, time visitors probably you're visiting with us for the very first time we've come to the end of our service today and we want to give you a place of honor we have prepared a cup of tea a mandazi is there samosa today that queen cake today yeah okay yeah is there a cookie at least there is a cookie amen there is a cookie uh, to accompany that tea or coffee we are first time visitors can I see you where are you by a show of hand? Oh, thank you. Thank you for visiting with us. Thank you. Pick your belonging. Whoever brought you, would you tell them to follow you and enjoy this cup of tea with you? Come to our brother right here on the left. He will lead you to our visitor's lounge and we will have that tea with you. Come, my brother. Come, 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 come. We won't keep you for long. Amen. Come right this way. 
Amen. Yes, come, come. Pitia pa mbele, pitia pa tu mbele. Uskogope. Yeah. Atuta kugunga na uwepo. <laughs> Amen. There are more coming. Would you come? Nina. for today with her husband elder Dor- Dorothy would you lead our speaker today with her husband to the boardroom yes and would you post them there amen 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 thank you senior pastor amen. bonus if you were i have a, a short announcement to make this afternoon um, as you are aware, our, our sister, our pastor, uh, Reverend Jakio, uh, will be leaving us at the end of this uh, month. And they have been a blessing to us. Haven't they been a blessing? Yes. Even today. They have cut across ministries from Sunday school, face ministry, um, you know, worship team, um, visitation. You know, as a family, they have served as a family. And because they have been a blessing to us, we want to be a blessing to them. Mm. This is different because we have released pastors in the past to go to other sit-up assemblies. But this time we are releasing our pastor to go to the wider ministry. And that is why we are doing it differently. And so uh, church administration set up a committee to be able to work around the the, the sending of uh, of of our pastor. And the committee has come up with a few ideas and um, the media team will display um, a pebble number there, we want to bless them. We want to bless these children. We want these three children, when they, when they go home, they know that they worshipped with the people that loved them. And so did we also love our pastor. So as the Lord enables you to give, we pray that you would give uh, um, generously towards this cause. That is a pebble number. I'm not going to read it, or probably if the print is too small, allow me to read it very quickly because of time. 0110 that is a pay bill number is 400 200 sorry 400 200 400 200 Uh, and the account number is 0110 and it will read the names of Emmy Waitera and Nelson Gishura Nelson is the treasurer of this committee, and that is why it is going to him. The account has been opened um, in that favor. But last week, our, um, our elder, uh, Dr. Oseje, also gave us an m number. So we keep to the m number, 07, it will also be displayed there, 614, uh, 0721-614-196. It will also go to Nelson. So whatever means, it will go to the same account. May the Lord bless you even as we look forward to blessing our pastor. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Wow. And by the way, as I said last week, if you feel like hosting the family for lunch or a dinner, would you extend that grace to them? Are we going to do that? Yeah, just extend the grace of God to them. Let us be a blessing to our pastor and her family. Amen? Amen. We've come to the end of our service. Shall we be upstanding? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace both now and forevermore. And everybody say, Amen. Go in peace. The Lord bless you. Amen. Sina mungu mwingine.